Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Dave here for Pro Tools Answers. So something very, very cool to happen today. Uh, we've just installed the brand new Pro Tools release 2021.3 qualify finally qualifying big sur and as you know uh, i've been running pro tools on big sur and a mac a basic mac m1 mini uh for about four weeks now to record the show um it's been a wonderful wonderful experience um and what we wanted to do to 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 demonstrate this new release is to put quite a chunky session um into Big Sur with, with the new version, uh, but also the fact that it's on an M1 um, is significant as well. And I've put on a, a rather large music session uh, that I've been working on recently um, that actually ends up cooking my MacBook Pro, uh, which is a, a 2.6 i7. Um, stick a couple extra plugins in this thing and it starts to uh, you know it, it starts to burn um so we thought we'd we'd shove it onto the m1 we'll just overload it with plugins we'll overload it with uh, with clip density and just see what happens so the session is open right here um just in its idle mode we can see that it's sitting about 36 uh, percent of cpu usage um let's just have a look at the activity monitor as well so we can see what's happening with the ram um <laughs> what's kind of interesting about this one is this is the base uh, apple mac m1 uh, this is 256 gig uh, ssd hard drive and eight gigs of ram um and it's just interesting to see how this thing is going to perform um, under a load. Now, if I just flick over to my edit window, I just give you a, a brief introduction of what's going on. So this track uh, has around about 70 tracks in it, um, mostly audio. Uh, there's a bit of complex routing going on with subgroups um, and into uh, a two bus at the end. It's quite a lot happening. And we've got some chunky plugins on here as well. We have a lot of Slate VTM going on on each of the tracks. We've got a lot of VMR going on on each of the tracks as well. Uh, we've got PSP's Neon. Uh, both the, the mixed versions and later on, uh, we have some of the standard plugins, which uh, it requires a lot more power uh, to run the standard version of the plugin. Um, and we have Slate's FG. We've got the, the VBC installed on here as well. Um, and what else have we got? PSP's Vintage Warmer. And a couple of other things, and I'll go through them as we go. Now, what I've done is uh, we'll, we'll be able to see throughout the thing that I've probably thrown on a few more uh, EQs and uh, limiters and VTM instances than I need um, purely because I wanted to throw as much stuff onto this session as possible and, and see if we could get it to crap out at any point. Um, and I've got way more on here than my, my i7 MacBook Pro can handle and it's been doing really well so far uh, but that's actually just running on its own i'm at the moment i'm running uh, camtasia for actually filming this thing so we've got some camera stuff going on we've got some audio recording going on so there's other tasks going on in the background uh, other than pro tools um so what i'm going to do is just hit play and we're just going to watch the meters work and we're going to see what happens hopefully you know everything will be cool actually just let let me continue just th telling you what's going on with all of these extra plugins so um striped across pretty much every track i've dumped a, a, a an instance of psp's vintage warmer uh that introduces a that's quite a, a lot of uh, power to run that plugin introduces a lot of extra samples and delay um shoved on a slate vtm uh, an extra vtm onto all of these things as well uh I think I pretty much went as far as I could go with VTM, uh, just running the session on its own before it started to go, can't handle any more. Um, and what else do we have on the master bus? Uh, probably worth letting you know that I've got a Slate uh, VSX um, on my two bus output as well. Now, that may, might make things sound a little bit weird because all I'm going to be doing is playing back. This isn't going to go into auto bypass mode. Um, I actually want this thing to be working. Uh, so we can get as kind of just put as much power into it as we possibly can so let's see what happens hey
is insane. So I, you know, all of this extra stuff, and we can see that the uh, the CPU meter is just busting out of the top of, of it. Uh, 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 various points of the song uh i'm just doing what we normally do during a session and we're playing back you know we're, we're moving around we're flicking between screens um and this meter is just going 100 percent you know cpu usage it's, it's just peaking every so often you know and if you've been using pro tools for any length of time you know exactly what happens when that cpu meter goes all the way up into the red we usually get our our cpu errors and and what our hardware buffer errors and um you know sort of full disclosure here i'm, I'm running on 512 samples right now um still possibly still got a little bit of extra uh, uh, extra power in reserve um it's just mind-blowing you know this is a 650 pound uh, apple mac m1 mini with eight gigabytes of ram in it uh, and it's not even the qualified version of Pro Tools for the M1. We've got Big Sur qualification, but we haven't got M1 qualification yet. It's just mind blowing. You know, we we were talking on uh, one of the recent episodes of Pro Tools Answers um, about whether we, I, th I think we we were talking about whether we'd get a system like this as as a professional. Um, and you know, I've, I've been using a MacBook Pro for the last. 10 years or well, this specific macbook pro for the last 10 years it's a 2012 nigh on 10 years um and you know i can run some chunky sessions on it and i very 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 rarely run into any issues um and that would be the system that i would be <laughs> recommending people go for as a as a professional production person rather than a, a, a base model apple mac m1 mini but you know geez this thing is handling so much stuff um and you know all of these plugins are running really nicely the slate stuff i've got some soft tube drama uh on there um anything else i didn't tell you about i don't think so i think the rest of it is stock plugins um the apple pro the the pro compressor stuff the pro limiter stuff um other than that it's just my regular Plugins that I have on every session, the VTN, the VMR, the VBC stuff, uh, PSP stuff. That's that's my stuff. Uh, I don't tend to have anything else. Uh, I've got some waves, actually. There's um, I haven't installed the wave stuff on here. I haven't insta installed Melodyne. Uh, but there's very little of, of any other things that I use. Uh, so the, the question of was, would I actually use this machine as a, as a professional production engineer? Um, <laughs> you know, I'm starting to sway uh, uh, over to, you know, absolutely, yeah, I could, because what am I achieving right now? Just epic amounts of, of stuff, way more plugins than I'd use on a regular session. Um, and uh, and I wouldn't be using this level of, you know, sort of powerful plugin on, on regular sessions either. I, I, the, the point of adding all of this stuff on there purely just to try and push the system as much as I possibly could. Certain would certainly wouldn't be having all of this uh, kind of clip density on there either. So <laughs> answers the question: Would uh, would would you would I recommend a Mac M1 for for professional production? I'm starting to sway uh, more closer to the you know absolutely I would because this thing was an absolute beast and certainly for sessions of around about 70 tracks it it's done a fantastic job i think this is probably the biggest session i would work on um i do a lot of work with singer songwriters so it's unlikely to get very very much bigger than that uh, so for somebody doing the kind of work that i'm doing this thing is just just freaking phenomenal uh, so there you go i hope that was interesting uh showing the brand new pro tools uh, 2021.3 uh, Big Sur compatibility released. We're still waiting on formal M1 qualification, but Apple are actually just uh, kind of around the corner from making uh, announcements on uh, their brand new uh, Mac range, uh, M1 silicon range. So I, maybe I'm kind of understanding that Avid are holding off on that, doing a little bit more testing. Perfectly happy. This thing is working perfectly fine. I'd be more than happy to move all of my work over to this thing. And I think, I don't think I'd have a problem at all. Uh, so I hope that was interesting for you guys. Uh, please like the video and share away if you enjoyed 
the thing. Um, if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe to Pro Tools Answers on uh, YouTube. Uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, you can now subscribe to our YouTube, uh, our, uh, our website, Pro Tools Answers as well. Um, hopefully we'll see you over there. Hopefully we'll be able to interact with you guys in some of the comments. Thank you very much for joining me. My name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. And I'm out to play with some more M1.